I'm having a great uh, chat with the new executive director. About six months, he came in last March of last year, six months as executive director of the Santa Barbara Symphony Orchestra, uh, David Pratt, and um, he's Australian, as you will certainly be able to detect soon enough. But uh, David has, has had an amazing giant career in many, many areas that I will ask him to touch on. And he is a, a visionary. I think I can say that. That's why you were hired, David. The Santa Barbara Symphony is stable. It has a good thing going. And there are still many, many large steps ahead to make this orchestra a really huge regional symphony orchestra. I'm going to ask you about those things. But uh, 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 David Pratt, give us an idea. You're an executive director. You have you functioned in that, that administrative world for these many, many years in Australia, I mean with the Sydney Symphony, with the Savannah Philharmonic, we will touch on that, here in the States, uh, with the, the Australian Film Board and Commission in Los Angeles. I mean, you, you, you're not new to the West Coast. Yeah. No, I'm not actually. In fact, the West Coast to me feels like, if any place feels like Australia in the US, it's really the West Coast. Um, so, you know, when this opportunity came up in Santa Barbara, um, I mean, the professional side of it's very important, but I think there's also kind of an alignment for me with California because it makes me feel like um, I'm closer to Australia in some respects. Yeah, besides it's warmer and there's less humidity uh, than, than uh, certain other places you have been. Yeah. And, yes, and, yeah. and it's very, you know, certainly Santa Barbara, very much a beach culture. And I'm, in that respect, a typical Australian. I grew up by the beach. I love the ocean. I, you know, it's, I have a real affinity to that. In fact, that's really the way I relax when I'm not working. I tell people, if you're looking for me, when I'm not working, head to the beach, because that's where you'll find me. <laughs> God. Oh, boy, it sounds like a perfect match. Now, you have mentioned in, in, in interviews and so on that, that you are a collaborationist, and what we mean by that, and we'll touch now on the first opening concert of the new season for the Santa Barbara Symphony. Nir Cabaretti is, is our wonderful conductor uh, on, uh, on October 17th and 18th, but that you believe in this idea of bringing, bringing organizations in a community together to, for collaborative work. Okay, why don't we just talk about September 7, excuse me, October 17 and 18, that opening concert, Carmina Burana, Santa Barbara Symphony, Santa Barbara Choral Society, State Street Ballet, I don't know who else you can jam on that stage. Go, give us an overview of that. Well, you know, I, I, apart from Carmina, I mean, Carmina is really classical music's most famous spectacle. It is such a spectacle <laughs> yes. and such a, you know, such a wonderful piece of music. Obviously, um, uh, you hear it everywhere, so people recognize that, that, that famous chorus. But beyond that, this is actually a symbol of, of, of the future. You've got four performing arts organizations coming together to work towards a common goal. The first thing is, artistically, it's got to work, always. And then you've got the business side. But this is really in the sense of what a partnership is because you're sharing resources, you're sharing expenses, you're sharing income, but we all share the same artistic vision and we bring something to the table artistically. Um, and these days where it's getting more and more difficult to raise money, I'm proud to say that these four organizations raise the entire cost of the production before we even go into one rehearsal. And that is extraordinary in a community the size of Santa Barbara. So the essence of, of a true partnership, this really reflects that, it exemplifies it. Um, and I, I think, you know, as far as collaborations go and partnerships go, um, communities uh, and philanthropists and, and foundations want to see more and more of it, sharing resources. Mm. Um, co-collaborating on artistic projects and uh, as it gets more and more um, challenging at times to, to uh, raise money you've got to look for ways that, that, that you can support each other financially as well and this is a great way to do it if it makes sense artistically because it's always about the product mm -hmm. ultimately. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and you've already stepped in. Uh, Carmina Burano is uh, is not the first. You have already established a good r rapport with the Ensemble Theatre Company in Santa Barbara. Well, absolutely. You know, and, and that's the thing. Nick Cabaretti has em embraced this uh, the, this whole uh, idea of collaborating. You know, before I was here, with a relationship with Ensemble Theatre. Of course, uh, it, it happens again this next season in November with this program around Shakespeare. Um, but I, I think it's one of those things that makes sense. Uh, I really do for the future. I, I think you're going to see more and more of it, N not just in Santa Barbara, but many other communities uh, in large and small small cities. 
Now, uh, you've, I've had a little look at Savannah Philharmonic and uh, a little look at your, uh, your history. And, uh, you know, there's, I know you know, uh, there are still some pretty big holes left in the completeness of the Santa Barbara Symphony's offerings. And I'm going to ask you just flat out, I know you want to try and find the funding and produce every single year a free offering to the public. That's so important. We spoke about it a little bit before. I want you to go there. But, you know, there's only a New Year's Eve concert. There is no pop series on the Santa Barbara Symphony. He's smiling. This is a good sign. Give You're me smiling a... because you, you've read my resume, you know, my background. <laughs> I do. You know, I, one of the things I love about my job, uh, you know, and I'm on the business side, clearly, but it's that, it's that intersection of business and art. And I love the business side working with the artistic side and coming together to produce successful, you know, programs, organizations, whatever it might be. And certainly, when you look at what orchestras do or any other performing arts organization in a community, um, you've got to look at the community and how you can um, engage various sectors of the community and, 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 and broader sectors of the community depending on the program. We have a fabulous subscription season with uh, wonderful uh, classical repertoire, both uh, you know, war horses and contemporary, and, and I think they've done a great job there, but there are opportunities uh, to engage other sectors of the community at different times in the season, not necessarily part of the subscription season, um, but they could be standalone events. Los Angeles is on our doorstep. A lot of our musicians play with, uh, uh, you know, um, in, with the uh, John Williams uh, and various other Hollywood, Hollywood Bowl concerts, and all that stuff, and yeah. the, the scoring stages in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, and I have a background too of programming non-subscription concerts. And the reason you do that is is one, it helps earn revenue. But secondly, too, there are people in the community that have no interest in coming to classical music. You know, that's that's just the way it is. But there are certain things during the year that they might come to. Is it, uh, you know, movie music or, you know, a, a film with the, 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 the live orchestra? Or is it some other program um, or artist that, that can perform with the orchestra that engages that sector of the community? And I think we have a responsibility as orchestras to do that. Because I believe that, you know, to, for orchestras to survive, they have to be deeply rooted in the community. And that means serving a broad section of the community. And this is one where we can do it with programs that fall outside of the subscription season. Yes, and uh, as we've just determined, that is a wide open new territory for you to explore over the uh, three year, five year plan. And the great news is... Uh-oh, he's going to tell me something good. sitting down with Nia Cabaretti and my general manager, Susan Anderson, um, and actually identifying programs in 16, 17, and 17, 18 and beyond mm. that were already putting together. Yeah. Um, uh, and that, that, that will not touch the integrity of our subscription season. You know, we, we know how important it is to our core audience, but there are, there are these opportunities. And the thing that you mentioned before that I, I also believe, and this is about being, again, rooted in the community, we have a responsibility every at least once a year to do a, a free community event that brings the community together. I've seen this in every community where it's successful, it works, it helps brand loyalty, it helps people align themselves to the orchestra and there's nothing better than, than standing on stage and looking out and seeing the diversity of the community you live in, enjoying the music performed by your local orchestra. It really is just yes. so gratifying. And as you said, broadening the audience is crucial. So far, a great, a great potential audience has been essentially, not to say ignored, but has not been tapped yet. And uh, that's, I think, why you are here with the Santa Barbara Symphony. Yeah, I think it's very important. You know, I, I think there are opportunities in our work too to even um, engage more of the, of the audience, our core audience too, or audience who are attracted to classical music. Um, but certainly beyond that, when you get out into the community and you see the diversity of the community, and I hear comments all the time. I go to lots of events and I talk to people and ask them what they think and what would uh, get them to come to a symphony performance and, and hear what's important to them. Um, a great way to do it too is for our education programs because you know education programs are grassroots programs, working in schools, working yeah. with parents, with kids, and there's a tremendous amount of information and feedback 
um, that we can we can get from those people. Exactly, and, and uh, let, let's just have a look at, again, the, the opening concert coming up. I'm going to give the phone number, too, to help you out a little bit here because this is going out through, throughout Southern California. Uh, opening concert is 17, 18 October. Hang on, i got to make sure. 8 o'clock, October 17th, that's Saturday evening. That's the opening night of the Santa Barbara Symphony at the Granada Theater, the tallest building in town. You can't miss it. Uh, and then 3 o'clock the next uh, Sunday afternoon, the 18th of October, and this is a fully staged chorus State Street Ballet, the Santa Barbara Choral Society, Carmina Burana. Everybody on stage, the dancers, the costuming, the whole thing, it's going to be an, an, an absolute spectacle. But uh, but let's uh, hang on. I wanted to ask you just one more thing. Let me try and find it here. You know, uh, you, you are you are your career is in arts administration of some kind or other. And by the way, you can't forget to, let's, to get back to this other subject. We have the Santa Barbara Bowl in terms of venues for popular events. What kind of city of this population, which is to say modest, a couple of hundred thousand people, has a 4,000-seat amphitheater that's perfectly set up for pop concerts and so on? So I'm sure you're delving into that, yeah? Absolutely. I mean, it's extraordinary. And I couldn't wait to get up there. In fact, uh, one of my... Um one of my board members took me up there a few months back to have a look around. I was really impressed, and then I've been to some of their summer programs just to see it in action. And of course, I have definitely have my eye on that. <laughs> there are wonderful opportunities. So, how come some of us are some of us do, do have careers and interests in certain ways? I'm, this is going to be the cornball question for you. But what is this? You've already mentioned this delight in in administrative arts. Uh, what, what, how does that work? I mean, I ask musicians and they say, oh, it's seven. Uh, suddenly the violin was an instrument for me for my life. Well, what, what, what is it with administrators? Did you re have a point in your life, an epiphany that said, mm, I'm good at this. I'll chase this. You know, I, I think it was that I, my career, you know, evolved. And it's, as you said, it's, it's, not, it's not been linear because I kind of spent the first part of my career uh, at first, except for the first few years out of, out of university, you know, working kind of in the film arena. Mm -hmm. I suppose, which then ended up taking me to the United States. And although I got into a kind of the general manager or executive director role fairly early in my career, around I think my first uh, role I was 29 years of age. I'm now 51, so that's over 30 years. And so over that period of time, you know, obviously you gain a lot of skills and experience. And I made a commitment to myself in my 20s that I would only do things that I'm really passionate about because mm -hmm. if I do something I'm passionate about I know that it will come out of my work mm -hmm. that I'll do my best work and that I'll work hard and that, and that also it, it'll just reflect who I am and I feel very fortunate in my life because all the things that I'm passionate about I've done and that is I'm passionate about film I'm passionate about music I'm passionate about travel, so I've spent a good chunk of my life uh, living overseas and a good chunk of my life traveling when I could. It gets harder as you, uh, as you move up the totem pole. But I found that over a number of years that I really enjoyed being in that role where you're across everything. The, you know, the artistic side, the financial side, the marketing side, the HR side, and that I could um, manage diverse interests. You know, that was something I was good at. <clears throat> I think my parents really taught me at a young age how to communicate with people hmm. and how to listen. And that's the key. Um, uh, actually, Nia called me recently the consummate diplomat. Um, and it really is a, you have to be in a diplomatic role here because you're, hmm. you're managing such diverse interests. But I, again, I love that intersection of business and art. And I think because of my career, I've worked with such a diverse range of artists from musicians to conductors to composers to movie directors to um, opera singers that I have such compassion and understanding of, of who they are and their craft and their love of what they do. And I really admire that. I really do. And I feel a real sense of responsibility to, 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 to look after that you know, as an executive director. Um, so, you know, I made that conscious choice, though, back in uh, it was about 2004 or five to actually segue to music. I knew that I didn't want to spend the rest of my career working in Los Angeles, and I knew one of my great passions was music. Now, I studied music as a young kid, you know, all through school, uh, piano, clarinet, you know, and how to read music. And I had a moment of thinking, oh, maybe I should apply for, maybe I should go to, you know, study music at a, a tertiary level. but. I wasn't particularly good at it, you know, but I loved it, you know, and I grew up in a family that loved orchestral music and loved mm. opera. 
Um, and I, so I didn't study it, but, but my love for it never went away. I've, I, I've always listened to it. I always subscribed to the, the orchestra of the, the, of the cities I lived in. And so it's just a natural fit for me that that would be somewhere that I would, would take my career because it's one of my passions. And it's not easy at times, I'll be honest with you. It's challenging. You know, you look at the orchestra business and what's happened and, and you know, the, the fundamental business model for orchestras has changed and it's changing. So it is challenging, but I enjoy that. I do. I enjoy um, uh, trying to bring people together for a common goal and to celebrate, you know, music and classical music. I tell people, you know, here's my passion coming through. There is nothing like sitting on stage in the middle of an orchestra and you hear that sound. I, I just think it's incredible. There's something about it that really just fascinates me and um, every time I sit down in a concert hall and listen to an orchestra, whether it's the one that I'm working for or another, I realize why I love what I do because ultimately that's what it's about and it's just absolutely extraordinary. You know, and orchestras are relevant today. You know, they play yes. <clears throat> music of new composers, um, they can play a range of music um, whilst also celebrating, you know, um, the masterworks as well, or, or, or lesser played masterworks we don't hear very often. Um, and I, you know, I think that they're, they're quite, um, quite diverse in what they can do. Is that it? Uh, because Here the lesson. <laughs> because I, I, I believe we can now uh, say firmly to all of the world that uh, the Santa Barbara Symphony Orchestra Board made a very, very important uh, decision in hiring David Pratt to be the new executive director of the Santa Barbara Symphony Orchestra. I've got goosebumps even as I speak here. Uh, David, thank you very, very much for giving me a few minutes of your time this afternoon, but also I can't wait to see, and I've already seen a little bit, like, even last year with the, with the collaborations and, and so on with ensemble theater and whatnot. I think where the Santa Barbara Symphony is about to uh, reach uh, two or three G forces in the next year, if you get my drift, faster and bigger and more exciting. So uh, I know that that's, that's your baby and you're going to be a wonderful, wonderful executive director of the Santa Barbara Symphony. Let, uh, let's get the dates in one last time just to sell a couple more tickets, okay? Opening of the Santa Barbara season, Saturday, October 17th at 8 p.m. Sunday, October 18th. Did I get that right? 17th is 8 p.m. On, yep. on Saturday. Sunday, the 18th of October at 3 p.m. Granada Theater, that glorious uh, opera house, if you will, that Santa Barbara has. What a great opportunity to come up for the weekend, as I say, over and over and over again, but to see this amazing collaborative performance of Carmina Burana with the Santa Barbara Symphony near Cabaretti conducting. He's a wonderful conductor. The Santa Barbara Choral Society, State Street Ballet, Santa Barbara's professional ballet company, uh, it's going to be a, a, a real spectacle. Uh, the telephone number is, is the area code in Santa Barbara is 805. 805 in Santa Barbara area code 899 That's the Granada Theater box office. Everybody, come on, you see what's going on. Magic, energy, it's a whole new world about to begin on the 17th and 18th of October for the Santa Barbara Symphony. David Pratt, many, many thanks. Thank you, Dan. Right. See you. Bye-bye. Well,